Broadsword. What is it? Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So, what is a broadsword? Well, often I get asked by people, um, do you teach broadsword? Where can I learn broadsword? Um, and uh, fundamentally, this term broadsword is quite problematic because for HEMA people, we don't really use the word broadsword very often, except in application to one particular type of sword. But in popular media, um, in the popular mindset, a broadsword I think it can mean various different things to regular people. When I say regular people, I mean the kind of people that don't have stuff like this on their wall. <laughs> um, and so what is a broadsword? Well, I think that most people probably consider this a broadsword. Okay, to me, this is not a broadsword, this is an arming sword. Okay, so the medieval one-handed sword, um, or indeed a long sword in some cases, many people would consider a broadsword. And why is that? I think there's a couple of reasons. Um, it actually goes back to the Victorian period where um, a broadsword was a, a generic term applied to many different types of swords. Now I'll go back to the Victorian period in a minute. But in more recent times, if we look at things like Dungeons and Dragons, for example, or indeed films, movies, um, then very often we'll see the term broadsword applied to something like this. Now. What we can say is that in the medieval period, this was, I won't say never, but almost never known as a broadsword. Um, in fact, the most common name for this in the medieval period was sword. Um, uh, in the medieval period, they weren't that worried about categorization and typologies and things like this, and this was a sword. And someone might refer to something as being uh, a short sword or a long sword or a broadsword. As a, as a descriptive, um, as an adjective, so describing the particular features. They might describe it as a sharp sword, or a blunt sword, or an old sword, or a bent sword, or whatever. Um, so <clears throat> this would be known as a sword, and very occasionally it would be known as an arming sword. Arming sword is a term that appears in the 15th century, um, it, and again, we have to slightly guess because it appears in wills and inventories, um, but it seems to be applied to swords that are worn at the side. They are, you wear them when you're arming, in other words, and they're part of your arming clothes, and therefore most of the time they'd be a one-handed sword. <clears throat> now, more commonly, uh, in for those people who know about weapons or indeed who study HEMA or just study arms and armour, a broadsword would usually be considered as this, a basket hilted sword. Now these were indeed known as broadswords in the 18th century, really to differentiate them from the other very common type of 18th century sword, the small sword. Now as you can see in comparison, the small sword is very narrow. So if that's a common type of sword at the time. What might you call something like this that is also straight, also has edges of, uh, and a point, but is broader, well you call it a broadsword. Um, and the term broadsword, you can find it in earlier um, references, but it really seems to have become common in the 18th century, particularly in reference to these basket-hilted, essentially at that period, Scottish-designed swords, uh, most commonly used by the Highlanders at Culloden and all of the other um, battles of, of the kind of Jacobite rebellion. Um, and so this was a broadsword. Now, in the 19th century, this probably, if most people said broadsword, this is what most people would think of. However, it's a bit more complex than that because for Victorians, they, in their mindset, calling this a broadsword, it wasn't defined as a broadsword because of the hilt, it was basket hilted, um, but they called it a broadsword because of the blade. Now, if you look at the blade, it's double-edged, it has fullers, and it has a point. That means it's kind of like a medieval blade, isn't it? <clears throat> and so, the Victorians, therefore, considered the earlier types of sword that were double-edged and straight and all of that kind of stuff, could perhaps be called broadswords as well. Now, while this isn't the best example to, to compare to because it's a different cross section, it doesn't have a fuller, for example, they, the Victorians considered these fundamentally similar types of swords because they were straight double-edged um, and they were cut and thrust swords. They weren't specialised particularly to either cutting or thrusting, they were, you know, a kind of compromised design. And so the Victorians considered that this type of blade mounted on a different hilt would still be called a broadsword and therefore a medieval sword should also be called a broadsword. But it gets a little bit more complicated than that. 
Because in the late 18th century, um, sabres and hangers, weapons like <clears throat> this, came into use, or more widespread use, they had always been in use in fact, but in, they came into more widespread, more universal use um, in the British military. And um, they recognised that this weapon wasn't a backsword. So they didn't, well, in a sense it is a backsword. A sabre is a backsword, it's a curved backsword in literal terms. Um, but backsword to them, ironically, seems to have specifically meant something with a basket hilt. So if it didn't have a basket hilt, um, they could, of course, call it a sabre, and they did come sometimes call it a sabre. But curiously, and we're not exactly sure why, apart from a, an obvious reason, um, they referred to these as broadswords. Um, this isn't the best example because it's actually a hanger, so this is fairly short. But longer examples um, with blades like this one, so I'll pull this one off the wall. <coughs> this is a Napoleonic era uh, British officer sword. Now, the blade on this is actually like a killich, okay? But the uh, Georgian people, uh, the Georgian era people in Britain of the Napoleonic period, essentially, would have called this a sabre or a broadsword. Why did they call it a broadsword? Well, I think it goes back again partially to the fact that it is broader than the small sword. Um, but it's a little bit more involved than that. It's partly because in Britain, at least, the method of using the sabre was very heavily related to the method of using the old broadsword. So there was an indigenous set of systems in the 18th century for using the basket-hilted sword, some of which were backswords, some of which were you know, single-edged, some of which were broadswords, i.e. Like double-edged. And um, the systems that came about to use the sabre when it first became popular in the 1790s, 1780s, 1790s, um, adopted a lot of in the guards and a lot of the fundamentals, the system of fighting, was taken from broadsword and backsword method, often described as Highland broadsword, and Highland broadsword method was adapted to the new sabre. So, partially for the fact that a sabre is broader than the small sword, and partially for the fact that sabres used broadsword method. And in that period, Highland broadsword was quite famous um, because of course in the, in the mid to late um, 18th century, the people who were still using cut and thrust swords, in this case with the basket hilt, famously in Britain were the Scots, and particularly the Highland Scots. So, when we get into the Victorian era, believe it or not, this, i.e. a sabre, was sometimes also called a broadsword. So it gets really, really confusing, and this is the sort of the connection and the evolution you see through here, is that the terminology means different things to different people at different times. But the reason for the link, at least in Britain, in the, the English language, and of course America follows this as well because America actually copied a lot of the earlier um, treatises both from Britain and from France, but Angelo's treatise, for example, was copied in America. Um, and in fact, you know, British style swords were copied in America as well, and French style swords later on. Um, so um, in the English language, the fact that this, we would call this, usually I would call this a sabre, but in the Victorian period it could also be called a broadsword. And the reason this could be called a broadsword is because the Georgian people before had called that a broadsword. And the reason they called that a broadsword was because they called this a broadsword, and this was broader than the small sword, and used in broadsword style, broadsword method, which was then applied to that, and then that evolved into the use of that. But Coming full circle, what really absolutely wasn't called a broadsword was this. <laughs> so, <laughs> to cut to the chase, many different types of swords were known as broadswords. And broadsword could also be a method of fencing, a style of use, not just a particular sword. Um, but what they don't encapsulate for the large part historically, so what we usually, what most of us talk about when we say broadsword, is this, a basket hilted broadsword. Uh, and in some cases it could be referring to, to, to a sabre. But what we almost, what those of us who know the most about swords and, and study swords and study swordsmanship, what we're almost never talking about when we say broadsword is the use of a medieval sword. So media and Dungeons and Dragons and things like this and lots of members of the public have simply got the wrong word for the wrong 
object. And so hopefully with time with videos like this and the spread of HEMA and knowledge of arms and armour, hopefully that will be rectified. But for now, we still encounter people calling this a broadsword. And whilst it might occasionally have been known as a broadsword if it was particularly broad in the 15th century, generally speaking, this is not a broadsword. Cheers, folks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on Facebook. You can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon, or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.